we have had a very good first session and uh, I'll be happy to facilitate our discussions for session number two. As Park Daniel uh, mentioned, we have four gentlemen uh, in this session uh, and I'll quickly do an uh, introduction of our speakers and then we'll directly go to their presentations to save some time. So our first speaker would be Park Pudi, Pudi Padana, who is Deputy Head of PRG for Planning and Cooperation. He has a long experience working on these topics and been associated with MOEA. He will be talking about monitoring peat restoration activities in Indonesia. So he would provide his insights and, and past experience from that context. Uh, his talk will be followed by Professor Azor Maas, who is a soil science professor from Gadama University in Yogyakarta. And his exp expertise lies uh, on peatland uh, scientific research, and he will be sharing uh, some of the important aspects of peat soil and what are the important factors that needs to keep in mind when we talk about peatland monitoring, restoration and monitoring. That would be followed by Park Agus, who is a research scientist in Forest Research and Development Center of Foradia, and he will be talking uh, in some detail about the paludiculture uh, uh, possibilities and how we can incorporate those aspects as we think about restoring peatlands. So he will share his thoughts and, and insight from that angle. And lastly, we will have uh, Sony Mambunan, who is a researcher in University of Indonesia, uh, part of Research Center for Climate Change. He coordinates work on physical, fiscal instruments for conservation and land-based emission reduction. So he will take us towards the economic aspect as we talk about peatland restoration and how people are dependent on these landscapes. It's very important to capture the economic aspects as we talk about restoring and he will discuss those. So with that round of uh, introduction, if I may invite Park Budi to share his presentation and uh, share his insight with all the audience and attendees. Park Budi, floor is yours. Thank you, Rupes. If I may operate uh, my own uh, presentation now. Yeah, that's going on well. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for all the kind uh, speeches that already we heard presentation, the keynote speech from uh, the two prominent uh, figures on peatland restorations. And uh, I will share a part of uh, my experience as the uh, deputy for uh, planning and cooperations in dealing with uh, making the, uh, uh, the document for planning using all available criteria and also the data that uh, we have since start. So we define the criteria of restoring peatland as mentioned by Pak Nasir. It's uh, based on the regulations and also the 12th principle of ecosystem approach that we uh, refer from the uh, UNCBD. It based on the revetting uh, criteria, revegetation, and then uh, revitalizations of local uh, community and socioeconomic, as well as the, uh, the whole economic factor that dependent on the land use using the uh, peatland as the, the base for the production area. And then defining intended changes. When we restore the created peatland, what we need to see the changes happen on the uh, peatland. In terms of increase in soil moisture, the, the groundwater level uh, increase also, lower in subsidence or stop uh, at all. In revegetations, extent of the revegetations, the species we use, and then the habitat quality of the uh, revegetations. Since we only start the work on the field works uh, less than uh, five years, maybe the 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 uh, the uh, monitoring on the uh, the use of the indicators and the uh, process indicators uh, can be shown, but the impact indicators 
maybe still far away from uh, being uh, a restoration on the peatland. So we also uh, looking for the criteria of peatland restorations in terms in the protected areas as well as in the cultivation area. The regulation uh, provide us the uh, the target. If it is on the protected areas, what should be for the restoration of the protected areas? But if it's in the cultivation areas, what should be happen uh, after we uh, restore those uh, cultivated areas? We all also work uh, under the mandate that was given by the president. We work to facilitate and to coordinate restorations of 2 million hectares at the seven provinces. So uh, after all the, the uh, document, uh, uh, planning document, uh, the assessment of the data that we have, the assessment of the degraded of, uh, on peatlands, and then uh, we uh, starting to do the uh, restorations activities on the ground. And then we need to monitor the peatland restorations, uh, the regular observations. Uh, why we do that? Because we need to know uh, the implementations works that we have. It is on the right track or it is uh, not on the right track with the a set of uh, indicators of achievement that uh, we uh, set uh, in the uh, planning document or with the uh, standard that been given in the uh, regulations. We also need to monitor because we need to detect uh, factors that uh, degrade impact peatlands. The peatlands, uh, the degraded peatlands, we restore, but somehow the intact peatlands still facing uh, the uh, 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 pressure from the opening up because uh, people sometimes still need uh, land to cultivate and uh, do other works on the uh, peatland. And it is all uh, important uh, for us for the monitoring to define and set criteria and indicators at the planning phase. Not necessary that after we, we do some work, some uh, interventions, and then we set the, uh, the, the, the indicators to monitor the progress. It is ideally the set of indicators and criteria is, has been uh, defined uh, in the planning process, and then uh, it, will, it should be included in those uh, strategic uh, planning and monitor evaluation documents. So uh, for that, uh, PRG developed PRIMS, we call it uh, Pitland Restoration Information and Monitoring System. It's an online web GIS platform. It is open to public to provide uh, information on the restoration progress, the three R's that mentioned by Pak Nasir, and also the Desa Peduli Gambut, the Pit Care Villages program that we have, in the seven provinces so that uh, it enables uh, users to monitor restoration activities as well as uh, to monitor the pit degradations as mentioned by Bu Ati it's also help us to have alert on the fire and the uh, 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 the land clearing and also the uh, building up uh, new canals so the monitoring challenges that we have. First, as Maria also mentions, the mapping is uh, the, uh, the, the mapping, it's really important for us to plan or to monitor. What we do now is uh, mapping uh, using the, uh, the uh, regulations that, uh, uh, the, the regulations from the Ministry of Environment and Forestry. Also, we try to implement the uh, mapping uh, methodology using the uh, method that has been standardized by the uh, Ministry of Agriculture it's, uh, and the SNE, Standard National Indonesia. We need to know the extent, location, topography, and the condition of the peatland, the peat profile, the type of the peat that is, uh, has been uh, has been uh, degraded or not degraded, the base material, the type of inundations, the water source come from only from the rain or it is uh, come from sometimes from the water body. 
from the uh, uh, rivers and also from the tidal. We need also to, to know the, the land use and the management unit and the uh, peatland and the challenges in available methodology is always uh, limited us, the tools. And sometimes we have to combine the remote sensing methodology with the ground survey. It's arduous and also uh, expensive uh, uh, way of, of mapping the uh, peatland. And then we do the planning, the implementations, and then the, finally the monitoring. Why we use the web GIS platform? Because we face the large uh, area of peatland, and the, uh, sometimes the, the, the peatland is not well mapped in some areas. And then, uh, yeah, we, we, we need to have like uh, uh, indicators that really reflect the conditions of the peatland. And uh, this uh, platform also uh, provide a platform for coordinations between uh, between users because we have uh, the uh, donors donors also works with uh, NGO work with uh, local community work with us in implementing some of the uh, uh, restoration plan and uh, we try as far as possible to avoid um, duplications and as much as possible to have one uh, project uh, will support the other project so that the uh, and other aspect of the monitoring is on the restoration impact monitoring, whether or not the uh, constructions of canal blocking really increase the uh, soil moisture, really increase the water table, and so on and so forth. So we try to implement the monitoring using the smart indicator. Some has been mentioned by our colleagues from WCMC. And this is uh, uh, the, the examples of what PRIMS can provide. The triangle, the blue triangle, re, uh, represent the canal blocking that we built on the land, uh, on canals, and the uh, soil moisture, the uh, linear soil moisture, will show that uh, within uh, before the construction and after constructions, the blue, uh, uh, the the bluer. Uh, meaning that the weather, the conditions. So it shows that all the canal blocking that in the uh, map shows that the area surrounding the, in, uh, the constructions are wetter. So before and after uh, construction and after constructions, it's wetter. And also the uh, other informations that we could uh, get from the uh, prints. Sometimes it is shown in the prints, sometimes it's shown in the report. This is uh, on the uh, result of the restoration inter interventions, not only for the biophysic uh, intervention, but also socioeconomic intervention. As mentioned by uh, Nasir, we have uh, currently 590 pitland villages in the program and uh, resulted in the process indicator that we show 35 rpgm des rpgm des is the uh, medium term uh, development plan in the level of village uh, we, we 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 support uh, that they include the uh, restoration uh, of peatland within the uh, development plan of their villages and also the annual uh, working plan that uh, been made also, uh, which incorporate the works on the restoration, and also the uh, village budget level. There are 173 village level uh, budget document, and uh, it accumulated uh, more than 19 billion rupiah of Danadisa or village fund for that uh, activities. And uh, we also uh, built, uh, we also established a field school for the land management without burning. It's uh, the uh, PLTB. It's for the uh, uh, transfer of millets within villages. It's conducted in the uh, 210 community groups that they, they can spread around the, the, the know how and the skill 
for opening up area, clearing up area without burning. And also in terms of conflict resolutions, we trained uh, 759 uh, paralegals in the village level. So they can uh, advise people in, uh, in the uh, conflict of uh, offer the right over the land so that they, they will have uh, a more civil uh, discussions and negotiations and not uh, come out with the uh, burning or other destructive uh, output. So the, the remaining question and knowledge gaps is always uh, the juggling between time, cost, accuracy, reliability, and the purpose. As Lisa also uh, later also mentions, if we need to monitor the works, the indicators uh, is set by purpose also. So uh, we need to make pitland monitoring as part of the integrated monitoring system. If, uh, whether it is the national forest monitoring system or other land use monitoring system, we need to improve monitoring tools. We know now that the satellite uh, technology, satellite imagery uh, advanced. There are more and more sensor technology available and we need uh, computational power. So we work with uh, FAO in using their uh, cloud computing system called SEPA. And we need also to uh, make a cascading approach from the general to specific. Sometimes it, we need to face uh, to, to communicate the general uh, the terms of what we monitor before uh, deep diving in the specific area. We also need a reliable methodology to, to, for, to verify soil moisture and uh, whether or not we can rely on the remote sensing uh, only or we need to uh, combine still with the remote sensing and information from the ground. We need also a reliable methodology to uh, monitor the emissions. Currently, we work also with uh, FAO in uh, doing the training and how to uh, translate the, the data of soil moisture, water table uh, from the uh, restoration activities, impacted from the restoration activities and how to translate it into the emission reductions. And this is uh, an example that uh, there's a strong correlations in the uh, in the map here. It shows in the three uh, Sipalaga uh, site what it is reported from the ground instrument and also what we detect from the soil map, soil moisture map. It really shows a strong correlations. And uh, by this. Uh, I will end my presentation and thank you. Thank you, Papadi. Yeah. Thank you, Papadi, for sharing the restoration activities that BRG has been working and also pointing out the important gaps, things that we need to keep in mind as we move forward. So we will uh, keep the major discussions at the end of this session. So without further delay, I would like to invite our next speaker for this session, uh, Professor Azwar Maas would be our next speaker. Uh, the floor is yours. I will ask Vito to put your presentation up. Professor okay. Azwar Maas. Uh, I share my presentation. I think Vito can do that for you, so you don't have okay. to worry about it. Okay, yeah. please. Uh, okay, please uh, share my presentation. Uh, thank you, Rabes. Uh, so, may uh, you, I have already my presentation? Um, okay. It's it's coming yeah. up live in a yeah, second. Okay. So the title is Water Balance of Pit Land uh, Hydrological Unit. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So oh, um, when we talk about pitland, uh, the figure um, in the left side above, uh, this is the um, natural condition of the pitland. We took the picture from the uh, Riau, the, uh, the depth of pit 
is about 17 meters. And in the original condition, they have a close uh, nutrient cycle. Various uh, vegetation flora grow in, in production, adopted to the wet, and then this dome become thicker and thicker by time because um, the all three will fall down to the swamp and the speed of uh, the decomposition is uh, slower than the position that make uh, our feet based on the woody material is become thicker and thicker. Yeah. And <clears throat> various uh, fauna grow uh, and de develop, bring up the um, distribution of seed drinking, for example. And we know also all is wet, uh, shallow groundwater through <clears throat> the year with um, good water balance because no uh, uh, man-made canal. Even sometimes we have um, natural canal decision. And this canal also uh, entering the uh, um, outflow with the um, uh, color, uh, uh, black black color. It means dissolve organic carbon. So in the Second slide, we see here converted peatland for monoculture, dry uh, vegetation land. Yeah, um, we will lose the pit formation. If we open the pit, it means no more uh, parent material for the pit formation. And then um, by digging the canal, uh, lower the water, and then oxidation speed up the composition by releasing carbon dioxide. And then, um, even the regulation mentioned that uh, all 0.4 meter the um, groundwater, and we see here, even the uh, canal, the, the canal water, only about 30 centimeter. But uh, the bare land exposed, and the uh, surface of the land become hydrophobic, potential for burning. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, we should understand two types of our uh, lowland peatland. Yeah, uh, formerly the swamp uh, will fill up by sedimentation from the eroded material from the upstream. Yeah, and then later on uh, it becomes shallow and uh, starting grow for the uh, uh, water um, help, and then later on followed by trees. Yeah. <clears throat> so, when the trees are falling down and then uh, decay, uh, sedimented to the swam, and still affected by tidal movement or the start of the, 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 the river, we call that uh, topogenous pit. Yeah? In the topogenous pit, when we talk about the uh, um, water balance, um, the source of uh, inflow is coming from the river, from the rain, from the uh, boundary uh, uh, to the upland, and also from the tidal. A lot of input. And at tidal movement also, there are four categories, A, B, and C, and D. So it means we're not so worried about this type of peatland because water came and out um, uh, in different way. But later on, above this uh, topogenous pit, we will create more and more dome. Yeah. Uh, not uh, anymore uh, affected by uh, uh, tidal. Not anymore affected by uh, movement of the water from the upstream. So it means the source of the water only rain. Outflow, just the same. Yeah. Evapotranspiration interception of plant canopy uh, to the river to the sea. So we just, for me, it's better we concentrate our uh, activity, especially for overgenic speed, because uh, topogenic speed normally can be deep, but uh, the thickness is uh, become go to downward because the substratum of the peatland is not uh, uh, flat or even concave, but it, it will be uh, irregulate. Uh, next slide, please. This is uh, ideal water balance 
sharing the water ya yeah, according to the regulation dome minimum 30% of uh, for uh, protection no canal should be closed and then no uh, natural vegetation so the groundwater will be close to the uh, the, the the surface and um, 30 percent is enough for example in some case that uh, even we have no rain uh, regularly uh, let's say about uh, one to two months <clears throat> but this uh, good idea for canalization in the utilities uh, utilization um, zone is far away from the uh, fact now yeah here uh, an example in the uh, right down um kahage batanghari hitam laut in jambi uh, they try to let's say uh, according to buati uh, they try to regulate their own water uh, without uh, without thinking about uh, uh, kahage uh, sharing the water but they they plan to keep the water for themselves uh, this is um, our challenge how everybody should go in line and then who uh, keep the water where the water can flow and then how to uh, adjust uh, sharing the water next please uh this one case study in the um so at least we have two parameters or two or two data mentioned about pit thickness in the uh, right way to obtain uh, with scale of one to five uh, fifty thousand yeah and then this uh, uh, accordingly to the regulation number 14 uh, of uh, Kailaka and also we should have um, they say lidar topographical map yeah and this uh, two data uh, has been used to evaluate the tipping tinggi yeah in the right above uh, you know that um, a lot of um, concession and you see over there the uh, hti or um, forestry um, trees is uh, less uh, density of canal compared to the oil palm concession three times more um, um, drainage canal um, uh, uh, longer or uh, sizing yeah so if in the ideal condition that uh, let's say we have two and a half meter being uh, used for conservation and then we have 30 percent and we will obtain about uh, almost uh, nine million ton of water if we keep this utilization in proper way uh, even we don't have uh, rain continuously about six uh, 60 days uh, we can maintain um, water level in the uh, groundwater about uh, 0.4 but you see here in the right uh, below uh, this is a uh, 30 percent of um, sub kahage we call that minor kahage uh, should be convert uh, to be uh, uh, as a protected area but actually we have over there uh, sago um, uh, private company and then touching uh, the top of the um, uh, dome this is uh, should be considered uh, how they can manage their own uh, uh, water and distribute it into the lower part yeah next slide please <clears throat> so um when when uh Buati mentioned about uh, 885 kahage or pau and then they have already 71 kahage with uh have a database uh pit depth and uh um, lidar it's time for example to calculate the uh, water zone uh zonation based on the uh, water balance at least 30 percent also it means can be if yeah, the dome is uh, with flat size can be more than 40 percent should be considered as protected area yeah this focus on especially for homogeneous 
pit hydrogen unit. The exquisite condition whether sharing uh, among stockholder uh, in one PHU or two PHU difficult to implement because our regulation is um, uh, come so late. The land has been uh, used uh, without considering the uh, PHU. Yeah. Also, uh, non technical aspect also factor for, to consider. That's why uh, Pa. Um, Pak Aludong mentioned about regulation is also important to be uh, adopted and then uh, the same regulation for everybody. Yeah. Uh, restoration planning for uh, rewetting, sharing water with water balance concept, stakeholder should involve if, uh, combination both government concession and local sector uh, from the, the, at the beginning. Yeah, up to implementation. Otherwise, uh, one one part cannot uh, apa, uh, do for everything. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Mas. Thank you for uh, insightful thoughts about uh, the water balance and hydrology in Peatland. I think it's uh, very uh, important for all people or all parties to understand when we talk about rewetting for restoration uh, rewetting will involve water and where the water will come who who and how it's shared through so that's very important point for discussion so uh, next we move to the next speaker of this session we have Park Argus uh, and he will be talking about paludi culture to support peatland restoration in indonesia <laughs> Pak Agus, you ready? Okay. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, and good evening for all participants. Do Thank you, you want to share your slides? Sorry to interrupt. Or okay, the slide again. Yeah. Thank you Thank for you. the invitation uh, to take a part in this important webinar. I want to share my ideas about the paludi culture. Uh, for to support people restoration in Indonesia. So uh, these the important things that uh, uh, Paludi culture should be related to the sustainable development uh, principles. Okay, this one the full screen, yeah. Um, so if we talk about the very strong sustainability in tropical peatland management, so we have to create a uh, ecosystem integrity in the peatland uh, management. So it means that the, we have to maintain the function and the structure of the peatland ecosystem to support the, all the living uh, forms and also about the ecological health and also the function, ecological function and structure to to support the, the the sustainable development to, for all aspects of uh, or if we relate to the sustainable some uh, sustainable development goals so this the set of the very strong sustainability and the subset of this should be uh, social cohesion or social inclusive inclusiveness and also economic benefits to the uh, community livelihood means that there is no uh, social entropy or social riot in the ecosystem, uh, uh, peatland ecosystem. And the people, local people, got uh, uh, benefits from the resources. So we have to create this, and then based on this uh, ground, we want to make a, a principles, criteria, indicators of uh, peatland management and peatland restoration. Uh, next, I think uh, we see that the Paludi culture is a cultivation of uh, local uh, species with wet condition or rewetted condition uh, to support the, without disturbing ec ecological function and to support the economic uh, livelihood and also social uh, cohesion. So, so the, the definition of paludi culture based on uh, these three factors, uh, uh, we create this uh, definition uh, in our organization, Paludi Culture Forum, uh, uh, just last week, uh, last 
last year. So that means that uh, we have to see the from a technical point of view, polyculture is uh, something like the uh, cultivation in a, in a landscape basis or in a site level also, comprises three points. One is re regeneration, both uh, artificially or naturally, and second, sending, and the third, uh, harvesting, as a tool of the polyculture, how to uh, reduce the something like a, a interest specific competition or inter specific competition. So that's the big picture of the polyculture that the, the, the enabling condition to realize the polyculture is to make sure that the the soil moisture of the peatland ecosystem is enough to support the living organism, especially vegetation. And that's, that's the polyculture, the enabling choice of vegetation. So we put the polyculture uh, in the restoration. We can, we can choose the polyculture for man managing the peatland or to restore the peatland. Also, to how to increase the productivity of the peatland. So this is the, the idea of the polyculture. So uh, we have a very lot of uh, a lot of best practices of polyculture in Indonesia. Even that that is just a few years ago that uh, this already acknowledged uh, through the BRG. But we have the traditionally uh, polyculture practices. Something like in uh, Sungai Tohor village, they grow sago. And they combine with the home industry, Menang Raya village. Uh, they, they produce purun and they harvest it sustainably uh, to make a mat and also uh, basket. And also, in the national park in several national park, they grow uh, pit some forest for uh, ecosystem restoration and also for uh, utilization. Uh, also, Jelutong, uh, they are polypila. They grow in several places in Indonesia in terms of to provide the benefits from, from the uh, Jelutung. And also in Kedaton, several pitstone forests, and Sembago National Park, they grow also uh, 12 local tree species, and in Jayapura Regency, they, they manage uh, natural sago uh, stands. So based on these best practices, and also how can we relate the, uh, the practices of the local people with link with the both uh, uh, vertically integration with the home industry uh, and also how this affect the uh, prosperity of the local people. So we, we can absorb, we can tap uh, important information to create the criteria indicators, how to manage uh, the tropical forest sustainably and how to restore uh, the, the degraded pitstorm forest. So, Based on the practices and also uh, demonstration activities and pl uh, demo plots, uh, in some places they they grow a lot of tree space and make a selection of something like in the we from the wetland, uh, uh, Sono and Tamri, Bu Tamrin, and also Bu Hesti Tata and Pak Ad, uh, Adi Susimanto also highlighted the the survival rates and the growth rates of uh, several three species under the polyculture techniques. So based on these practices, uh, uh, we can tap a lot of information about the uh, about the criteria indicator from the uh, biophysical aspects. Uh, so the potential gaps of polyculture, uh, I think the, the, there is still uh, uh, several gaps. One is technology package of polyculture are still limited to respond heterogeneity of the peatland landscape, so uh, I agree with the uh, Pak Man that the the high, uh, peatland ecosystem is, is very diverse. Uh, also in the uh, topographic uh, features, soil, water, and so on. Something like the the degree of the destruction, degree of the uh, the degradation of uh, also peatland is, is very diverse from the slightly disturbed up to the, the uh, destroy uh, the ecosystem uh, for the graded uh, peatland uh, forest land something so the strategy management strategy to the the, the, the gradation of the peatland de degradation uh, is is important uh, well, uh, the second gap i think the, the availability of seed sources for restoring the peatland and limited knowledge about the 
autocology of several three species should be resolved. Not only the autocology, but also from the, by, uh, the physical properties of the soil. Something like Pak Man mentioned that about the, the hydrophobic uh, repeated fire cause the hydrophobic properties. It's very hard to grow. Uh, even the very uh, pioneer species in the uh, in the site. So how about the subsidence? About the uh, intraspecific competition with the ferns? It's also this is very challenging. Uh, how to make a success of the agriculture in the field? And the the last one, the huge areas of the graded peatland in Indonesia are leave abandoned, and only several areas have already been destroyed. So this 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 is a big challenge for us uh, to to find the technology and to to arrange the social uh, participation in, through the adaptive management strategies and how to make restoration uh, economy. This important restoration to make to create restoration that uh, benefits to the local people and also to create a forest landscape restoration. Uh, even the collaborative forest peatland forest landscape restoration based on the uh, landscape or uh, peatland uh, hydrological units and promotion uh, that, that's the important and very challenging in the paludic culture there is there, there is still a uh, threat of uh, economic uh, development and conservation to apply the paludic culture in the site level this between the like something like the company and the people and also from the conservation uh, 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 point of view so uh, based on the uh, evidence based from the research let's say research, research findings we 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 did uh, several research uh, activities in the PHU Sungai uh, Katingan Kahayan especially in our uh, KHDT Katumbang Musa about the vegetation and the presence of soil macrofauna so we can choose we can uh, choose later on the, about the vegetation attributes and also soil macro fauna attributes as indicators of the healthy ecological health of the restored uh, degraded uh, pit stone forest. So from this, let's say well, from pit stone forest, we have the abundance curve, uh, normal logarithmic model and after fire, the model of the curve uh, geometric the, for the uh, feet thickness uh, four to eight uh, meter de uh, 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 depth, and also the undergrowth copper is higher, a bit higher than the the cello pit uh, from one to two meter depth, uh, only forty seven to fifty percent, uh, sixty months after fire. So it's very important to know the history of the degradation, the history of degradation, especially caused by anthropogenic uh, fire events. So it's very important. Also, the population and number of species of soil macrofauna can we use for the indicators. Uh, let's say this is very, very important about the presence of uh, soil macrofauna uh, in, the, in the upper layer of the degraded uh, uh, pit zone forest. The, the same uh, study also we conduct in the Subango National Park uh, with a similar result and, and about the the vegetation. So from the vegetation uh, point of view, we, we can see something like uh, we, through the analysis of vegetation analysis, the richness of species diversity, uh, dominance, uh, evenness, uh, richness and sort of things. It's very basic uh, uh, forest ecology study. This also helps to to assess, to monitor the the, the recovery of peatland uh, peatland forest. Also from the study, uh, we have already uh, several findings from the planting trials in uh, Tumbang Nusa uh, forest uh, area. So the, the performance of Balangeran, uh, Soria Balangeran is very uh, adapted. I think this uh, is the highest compared to the Jelutung, uh, Ramin, and uh, Gemor. Also the same uh, with uh, uh, the researcher from Banjarbaru uh, found the same that the Balangeran even that the uh, with the minimum uh, tending, uh, the, the survival rate and the growth uh, is, is, is moderate. So this is the, our finding. So we can use later on uh, about the species selections based on the ecological suitability uh, and also uh, social, uh, social uh, preference. 
So applying polyculture uh, for forest landscape restoration comprises uh, five aspects, I think. So first, we know uh, the techniques of polyculture, which which one we choose uh, based on the the degree of the forest uh, disturbance or forest destruction. First, natural recognition, just keep it, uh, avoid the the force or or factors that can uh, destroy the uh, the ecological uh, this destruction. It's natural regeneration, or we can make a monoculture plantation, like in some parts, or mixed species plantation. We can mix. I think this better about the about this about the integration uh, uh, approach compared to segregation approach. Also, agroforestry combining that the uh, agriculture crops with uh, trees. And also one is uh, assisted natural regeneration that uh, did a long uh, uh, several times ago or uh, which uh, years ago that Philippines uh, practice this assisted natural regeneration is costly is is very uh, efficient uh, cost effective uh, uh, rehabilitation or restoration uh, techniques or for uh, forest landscape uh, restoration nucleation so to just grow the trees in a, a small compartment and from the trees we can uh, spread the, uh, the, the, uh, the the regeneration to to surroundings also the important things uh, first uh, for applying polyculture we have to improve the grow, groundwater level and, or uh, soil moisture as per man uh, make a, a good uh, grab the uh, relation between uh, groundwater level and soil moisture, I think. But I, I prefer to use soil moisture compare, uh, 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 to measure the, the recovery of uh, pit some forest or pitland uh, for uh, the condition. Also, the, we have to produce quality planting stocks. It's very important because uh, the the uh, adaptability of the species is still very hard because we the, in the in the wet, wetland the uh, the knowledge is still limited compared to the dry land. Also, the correct time of planting is and also tending with control and also with control vegetation management. So this based on the uh, trials in the field, we can we can we can know how to choose the the, the techniques and also the species. The space selection pa best. Pa uh, sorry, friends. sorry to interrupt friends? you, but ah. uh, okay. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but we are yeah kindly. Yeah, the, the last one is final, yeah. economy. The principal criteria and indicators of pillar restoration. First, I think the principle is to improve the ecosystem integrity through the criteria how to make sure the ecosystem function is improved. Indicators: no forest fire, reduce subsidence, increase groundwater level, increase vegetation. Second criteria is increasing biodiversity like uh, uh, Lira or uh, uh, stress on, focus on biodiversity. This is uh, uh, very important about the no, new local plant species. The uh, third criteria is the capacity of forest to regenerate and to develop. So this is very important also. Uh, we talk about the space diversity in growth, good survival and growth. And also, uh, I, I propose the second principle about the how to uh, to apply multiple use uh, peatland uh, management. In, uh, so, how to make sure that the multiple use uh, works in the in the peatland management or peatland restoration? The criteria we have to clarify to make sure that the what is what are the management objectives of the peatland uh, management or peatland restoration indicators. Uh, Polyculture techniques prescribed. We have to make sure the 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 correct uh, polyculture techniques. Harvesting system prescribed. Monitoring and controls conformity with planning. I think uh, the conclusion and recommendation. Polyculture strongly supports recovery of the great plains ecosystem. The uh, second, the choice of polyculture techniques and the plant species are highly dependent on the degree of pit storm forest degradation by physical properties and pitland and social preference. Ecosystem integrity of pitland restoration can be realized through ecological health and function, increasing biodiversity and vegetation development. And, and from this one, we have to uh, build the key success indicator in the management of uh, pitland uh, restoration. 
and the multiple use peat swamp forest can be promoted in order to achieve sustainable uh, tropical peatland management. So this is very important uh, compared to the single use. Peatland restoration demo plots, vegetation and biodiversity monitoring should be conducted in relation to peatland restoration. So, so we have to make a, a monitor, vegetation and biodiversity monitoring as an input uh, or to make a good uh, management prescription or management uh, directives for peatland restoration in the landscape level and also on site level. Uh, that's all my presentation, Rupes. Thanks and uh, back to you. Thank you, Pak Agus. Um, yeah, thanks for sharing the, the key or salient features of political culture and how that can be one of the aspects to think about when we talk about uh, uh, restoration of peatlands and how some benefits can be provided. So thank you for sharing these details. Uh, we move to our next speaker, uh, Sony Mombunan, who will be discussing about economic indicators for peatland restoration. So his talk will be focused more on the economics aspect. So over to you, Sony. Thank you, uh, Rupesh. Thank you, uh, colleagues. Uh, uh, happy to be here. Happy, happy to be sharing a panel uh, on exploring uh, criteria and indicators uh, for or on peat restoration. Let me share my, my presentation. Uh, one minute, please. Hope you can see the, the screen. Uh, yes. yes, thank you. Yeah. So we'll use my uh, negative 10 minutes, probably eight minutes. Um, so when it comes to criteria, I think that there are the considerations uh, uh, for uh, when we want to craft economic indicators. And I'm, I think I'm, I'm a bit biased here because I'm, I'm, I've been involved in, in policy uh, 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 advocacy and, 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 and practices. So more or less the criteria that I'm going to touch on here, sort of bias toward, toward policy. So one is policy relevance. It needs to address key pit restoration issues that you know national, subnational, including local governments. Uh, Babudi mentioned about village, uh, which there are, there are, there are uh, uh, encountering. And uh, relevance here is purpose driven. It may you know, uh, be different between different scale of governments, including the global one, but at least there are also possibilities for, for, for uh, 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 indicators that sort of embraces uh, different scale uh, for policy relevance. Then we have integration here. So we hope that indicators to be uh, crafted can facilitate different elements that need to, uh, to be integrated. I'm, I'm thinking about things like expected economic outcomes what we anticipate to have by having, you know, uh, certain uh, uh, actions and how it can also connect with means of implementation like financing and of course, speed policy interventions, interventions based on mandates of institutions of different scale of governance and so on and so forth. Then we have also analytical uh, soundness, you know, it needs to be informed by latest science and if we, extend a bit with, with so-called post-normal science, and it may also uh, uh, being, uh, be informed by, say, uh, uh, knowledge from, from uh, civil society, indigenous uh, communities, and so on. Of course, it needs to be measurable. So data are available for these. It could be cost-effective. It is too expensive, and uh, we cannot afford that. And with integrity, you know, with, with uh, 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 data that, uh, that we can uh, rely on. So that's more or less the criteria that I uh, uh, that came across when 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 uh, when I was preparing the, the the presentation. Now let let me let me look at one very specific class of indicators. We we call it outcome indicators. And let me pick two pit provinces, pit jurisdiction in Indonesia, Riau and South Sumatra. These are sorry, these are very small and is uh, still in Basa. Uh, Midterm development planning, we call it here at PGMD for 2019. Uh, up to 2024, Riau has uh, 32 outcome indicators, South Sumatra have 22. Uh, 
uh, let me summarize them. We have here, you know, economy growth, both aggregate across economy across sectors, and we have sectoral, forestry, plantation, and so on. We have capital formation, employment, how, ma how many jobs are, be, uh, are to be created or targeted to be created, inflation, poverty, the depth, the extent, the width of poverty, spending of each person or per capita spending, investment, balance of payment, farmers, including aquaculture farmers, uh, 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 terms of trade, income inequality, and so on. So these share economic, very economic in nature. And these outcome indicators are there alongside social indicators like human development, like life expectancy, gender, even cultural, uh, cultural advancement. And of course, environmental quality, uh, air quality from say haze and, and uh, pit fires, emissions, land cover and so on. The question is how these different indicators are co-defining, are, are defining each other, are interacting. That, that's something that I would love to uh, deep dive later uh, in the later part of the presentation. So, so a bit reflection on, on the outcome, how and to what extent I mentioned, for instance, pit restoration as policy in intervention, something, something deliberately uh, picked or selected as policy, contribute to achieving the targets in these outcome indicators. How can canal blocking, primary, secondary, secondary kind of canal blocking as a whole can contribute to say, both emission reduction from say pit, but also at the same time can create, you know, or can facilitate income creation. So these are, 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 are delicate in terms of discussing outcome indicators where each outcomes are communicating or are uh, uh, co-defining or defining each other. And do information in the indicators capture and reflect both synergies and trade-offs? Uh, synergies like if we prevent, you know, forest fire, we don't need to incur costs on, say, health care for respiratory, uh, you know, kind of issues. This would be straightforward, but I believe haven't been, you know, sufficiently captured and reflected in the way we. We, we, we craft our indicators and plan our development, finance our development, monitor our development. What we have at the moment are standalone indicators seen as linear, you know, uh, we, without really communicating, without really synergies, a uh, trade-off effects uh, among them. So few together, build it into the pit ecosystem. Now how we see, for instance, paludi culture commodities, are these commodities more competitive than, 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 than say commodities of timber or royal palm in terms of what pit restoring or to use Pak uh, words, Pak uh, Nazir also about the, you know, pit friendly kind of activity, pit restoring and welfare enhancing for the local community, for households. Can this relation be traced in information within the indicators? These are our policy uh, questions that I, did, uh, I think we need to reflect upon and, and address because what we have indicators now, these are indicators whose, whose information are produced as standalone. You know, you can add them in linear version, but in fact, they are not, as we know it very well, they are not linear. So this needs to be captured. Now, I, will, I would love to bring our attention and link it to means of implementation. And we may be want to consider later on in the next series on, you know, linking these into means of implementation to the outcome indicators, financing, you know, we cannot imagine and design indicators without funding for these. And I want to, uh, I want to go even deeper in this, you know, by looking at specific kind of fundings and how it affects outcomes. So when uh, I mentioned here, domestic mobilization of resources, fiscal transfers, uh, we, we have discussed a, a bit about village fund, maybe uh, uh, general purpose uh, transfer or revenue sharing or non-state expenditures even, you know, uh, 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 addressing specific for pit restoration or for, uh, you know, financing areas or aspects that are associated but not directly, you know, linked with, with pit restoration. This should be trace, traceable, I guess, to be able uh, you know, for, for monitoring uh, purposes. If not, then we cannot monitor uh, uh, how resources are allocated and how the anticipated, you know, uh, 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 outcomes. 
we uh, we know the result based payment uh, bilateral partnership green climate fund now if we talk about the result base how can we trace the results from this kind of payment into you know means of, of implementation into the very funding the very financing we use to address this with restoration issue and we need to link these two you know to public public finance private finance and then link them into what we what, what we have been uh, adopt uh, uh, coin as a blended finance you know sort of blending the two type of financing and de-risking uh, the two type of financing and then address it into different scale you know different uh, uh, governance scale uh, together as polycentric as Eleanor Ostrom uh, uh, suggests national you know addressing global concern sub-national even villages these have this implies different stakeholders with different preferences different priorities different mandates so these are delicate issues that we need to to think about uh, you know uh, indicators and then put them uh, together and link them into outcome indicators so now uh, bringing them together this is an exercise we did with with Bapanas for the midterm development planning uh, and also for the so-called thematic studies for, for pit-led economy so uh, this use system approach where we see different elements and system and subsystem all together simultaneously. If you have, if we look at you know upper side, uh, should I please mind uh, remind me of the time? You know, uh, I stop. If I still have one minute, and I'll continue. Yeah. So this this is how we bring them together. We have the upper side. We have the you know the economic one, employment, income, uh, uh, share of, of agriculture, uh, land, palm oil, timber production. Uh, below uh, bottom uh, part of, of the figure, we see, you know, ecosystem integrity, natural peat piles, peatland emission, and so on. You know, uh, flood and drought risk are here. And on the, on the upper, upper right, uh, right side, we, we can find the government revenue, even public deficit. And in times of COVID, we are mobilizing, we are refocusing our resources, not to peat restoration. We are focusing it for health or something else. So we need to consider how means of implementation are being also sort of imagined and crafted into, 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 into indicators. Now we need to bring them together and see how they are embedded into pit ecosystem. And then if you look at oranges, you know, uh, uh, those with, with orange colored uh, 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 um, description, these are, um, a pit restoration and, and partly a conservation uh, 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 intervention. You see canal blocking, pit land, uh, land swap even, uh, early warning system, vegetative burning blocks, climate change of course, of course emission reduction, uh, uh, paludiculture, uh, they, they are all here and we, we, need, we can test them how the effect of these pit, you know, intervention policy intervention contribute to different aspects and elements in the realm of economy and social and ecosystem so um, yeah uh, the last one for, for my messages so I, I think the economic indicators as mentioned uh, should be ones that are approached and crafted as integrated especially when it comes to the information they convey and the information and outcome indicators associated with peatland restoration, including economic aspects, need to reflect the effects of proposed and implemented policy intervention, which reflect, you know, mandate, roles of different stakeholders, and into means of implementation. I mentioned financing. If we have the luxury of time, we can discuss technology, capacity building, and so on, and their integrated uh, integration. I think I'll stop there. Uh, thank you for, for, for having me. Thank you, Sony. Thank you very much for uh, <clears throat> bringing up the economic aspect, the finance aspect, which is always very important for any initiative. And peatland restoration itself is uh, has so many, I would say, moving parts. So economy is a is a big component of that. So thank you for bringing us to that. Um, so we have heard for all from all of our four speakers. Uh, we are a little bit out of time, running out uh, of time. So instead of going uh, very deep into discussion, I would just 
like to thank all the speakers of this session and ask Park Daniel if there are any burning question, anything that uh, was asked for any of the speakers that we can probably touch upon briefly, maybe one or two. And I will also request speakers to just to try to be brief and you can always type longer um, answer if need be. Uh, Daniel. Yes, uh, just pick two of them. Uh, the first one is for Babudi. Um, when you presented your frames, and then I, or the question, somebody asked the question, uh, said, also heard about the SIM attack from the Ministry of Forestry. Uh, the question is, how are these two uh, systems uh, complement each other? Are they competing or uh, can they complement, for example, in the concession and community lands, something like that? And then the second one is for Pa Agus. Uh, have you experienced or observed the adverse impact of paludi culture? Um, because in many cases, um, economic uh, crops with high economic value are more favorable. So if you introduce less uh, favorite or favorable crops or trees or species, would that be causing adverse impact from ecological point of view? And lastly for Pak Maas, sorry, three, uh, the issue of water balance uh, when it is uh, in the drying process, it is not reversible. How, how can you uh, consider that process after you re-wet uh, drain peatland in your water balance estimate? Thank you, Daniel. Let's start with Pabudi. Yeah, quite simple. Uh, the answer is complement each other, actually so that uh, we can use Cipalaga also to verify the soil map that we produce with the uh, help uh, of FAO in the soil moisture map. That's all. Thank you, Papati. Um, so should we go to Professor Maas first in the order of presentation, then we can come to Park Agus. <laughs> okay, um, thank you for uh, one question. Yeah, um, so um, adjusting the soil moisture uh, level, one, one more thing that uh, don't keep the surface of the pit bare. So please cover the pit, any, everything you, you, you do, but cover the pit. We always see the, uh, the road on the pit is become hydrophobic. And if the rain come, the hydrophobic pit is uh, run away and then uh, floating at the surface of the canal. So this irreversible drying, uh, difficult to rewet again. Yeah. And later on, they may rewet and then uh, lay down at the bottom of the, the, the canal. Yeah. So, um, we should able to bring up uh, other source of the water, for example, by pumping to rewet if uh, the period of deficit coming. For example, no continuous rain during some uh, 10 days or even, uh, let's say, uh, 10 days that um, if uh, our evapotranspiration is about 5 millimeter, 10 days is already 5 centimeter of the redu reducing of uh, moisture from the surface of it. That's, that's my answer. Thank you. Thank you, Parmas. So we go to Park Agus. Would okay. you like to respond to the question, please? Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I found uh, several comments and questions in the chatting room, but I can summarize. First, that we have to value the peatland uh, ecosystem as a unique ecosystem and as a uh, natural capital for uh, sustainable development. So means that uh, if we destroy the unique ecosystem, so we can create uh, hydrologic, hot hydrologic, uh, meteorological disasters. That's very costly, something like a uh, uh, haze, uh, uh, flooding and drying and drought season and sort of things. So means that 
we have to adapt the the, the very fragile ecosystem uh, with not uh, change the drastically the ecosystem. So let's say I put in the ecosystem integrity in the context of the sustainable development. So like from Jack really that well, yeah, we have to promote uh, very uh, less cost of polyculture. You just harvest the purun and the very very uh, high economic activities in the in the off of forest it's like a uh, industry also sego we can create uh, we can put this sego uh, for fodder of the uh, chicken uh, duck or, or so ever and then can we can grow sago in a deep uh, like an uh, experience in this sarawak we can grow in a deep deep uh, uh, pit soil yeah the this even the actually the productivity is smaller than the in the peninsula uh, deep but that's the, the the choice, yeah. And also about the Liberica coffee and the other uh, dryland practices, we bring the dryland practices to the wetland uh, ecosystem. So this very we change from the uh, the ridges pair of the dry dryland to the wetland uh, ecosystem. So this make a very bad uh, consequences to the to the environment. So through that. Uh, green economy and sustainable development uh, we can go in a in the long long term the benefits compared to the cost so, so should be the the threats of uh, like uh, daniel mentioned about the uh, oil palm or whatever species from the dryland we import it to to the the wetland make a good uh, hydro meteorological disasters compared to Thank the benefit yeah that's, that's, yeah, that's the yeah. story about the paludic culture. Why we promote the paludic culture to resolve our, our uh, problem, especially also also the uh, the invasive species is the second disaster yeah, of we can uh, biodiversity. biodiversity. Mark, Agus, we need we need to move to next session. We can continue okay, this thank discussion you, on the, the question. question uh, uh, the, my response to the question and comments, especially Jack Relay, about the purun purun is very important. Okay. okay thank you. Um, so, uh, as we conclude this session, I really quickly want to touch upon what uh, Fabudi uh, mentioned in his presentation, that when we talk about restoration of peatlands, there's always some kind of trade-off. There are different issues like, uh, you know, the time, cost, accuracy, reliability, purpose. So we keep those things in mind as we move forward. And we're trying to come up with identifying these criteria and indicators. So this has been a very rich discussion. Uh, we dive deep in some of the topics, very relevant. And we'll discuss them more in subsequent webinars. At this time, I th thank all speakers and audience and participants to pay close attention. And I would uh, invite our Daniel to, uh, to invite our next speaker for the concluding remarks. Uh, so, Pai Daniel, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rupesh, for leading a very productive session. Certainly, we, we learned a lot from various aspects of this component in all this indicator or criteria in, in, in pit restoration. So, last but not least, uh, to conclude this session, we all would like to hear uh, the direction of wise word from DRG, which is going to be represented by Pa Haris Kunawan. Uh, what is your expectation, Pa Haris, towards uh, the way forward? Uh, where are we going to head to? So uh, you have 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, pa, pa Daniel. Uh, good afternoon. For all, or uh, good morning, I think, I don't know, good, uh, good evening. So, uh, it's very interesting for uh, our event, online workshop, and I have uh, enough time to also give some uh, comment and then also some, uh, uh, some discussion for all of us. Can I share my presentation? Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, my name, I think I will, 
uh, some of you uh, to know uh, well about me, uh, as Pak Daniel mentioned, I am Haris Gunawan from Pitland Restoration Agency in the Republic of Indonesia as the Deputy Research and Development. Uh, I would like to say thank you for all presenter. All of pre the presentation is very insightful for us and how to provide robust outcome uh, of criteria and indicator to pitland restoration. Okay, criteria and indicator are very important and must be established holistically to support pitland restoration program, especially tropical pitland in Indonesia. So before I make a conclude and give a wrap up for the uh, this event, I also introduce some uh, idea or some uh, discussion. In building a harmonic living in restore Pitland in Indonesia, as many or previous uh, presenters say that there are very important for very important pillars that must always be equally considered. There are, as we know well, both biophysic, social, economy, and government governance. The importance of four pillars are concluded from BRG for years of research. So in this time, I want to also uh, introduce the, our milestone research activities and results. Comprised of 120 research packages cooperating with universities and research institutes in Indonesia. But we still have many gaps that must be filled. These pillars are for restored pitland. Meanwhile, in natural pitland, only biophysic aspect matters. However, natural pitland will become more rare in near future. However, currently our regulation related to criteria and indicator uh, P16 uh, 2017 mostly regulate about bi biophysical aspect and rather neglect, neglect another important aspect. This might be due to difficulties in defining indicators. Without this four pillar, it is not possible to have harmonic living. Pitland has to be in good shape, dome, vegetated, as mentioned by Jack Riley in the chat, and should be wet. Local people should live in peace and prosperity. The government must make sure that governance in pitland always pay respect to the function of pitland. In 2000, 2020, BRG conduct some research to fill the gap toward sustainable pitland restoration, including hydrology, fire danger ranging system, integrated pit restoration research, T3R uh, and 3R uh, buy-in, buy-in 3R. Pit friendly commodity, multi-stakeholder participation, uh, pit restoration criteria and indicator, new research to get through information on how to pit land must be restored, but not only biophysic aspect. And of course also about the biodiversity and conservation, high conservation value uh, forest. The most obvious thing which is degraded in Indonesia pitland is hydrological function. The president himself declared that pit must be wet. Pit must wet, whatever it takes. Therefore, BRG with revetting program have been exploring how to restore water balance in pitland, as stated by Dr. Budiwardana in earlier presentation. He mentioned about Total canal dam install drill well canal canal backfilling water level monitoring etc. This is to impact 
to emphasize the importance of our weighting. It is paramount to have a precise calculation on hydrologic cyclus component within peatland hydrology unit. For example, Shru, uh, Sipalaga, and Simantak provided by Ministry of Environment and Forestry. This picture show example small restore peatland area in Tanjung Leban and Sungai Tohor. And ideal condition, ideal condition with become the target. And the example can how restore peatland should be. The more important thing is that this condition has to prevail in landscape scale. So throughout uh, we call kit peatland uh, peatland hydrocool unit kahage. All of the water level must above above uh, minus 0 0.4 meter or more to achieve this condition water balance should be calculated and precisely uh, monitoring we right now we uh, try to give the uh, the example as also uh, professor azorma has uh, already uh, informed us already explanation but we we would like to also landscape approach is the keyword as also uh, Pak Nazir uh, give us a uh, message about this. All, cri all criteria mentioned earlier need to be achieved in landscape scale. Pulau Tebing Tinggi is one of the example on how BRD try to ex explore how to restore peatland on landscape scale. A lot of data has been explored and monitored so that information about this peatland agricultural unit can be as comprehensive as possible. For example, we have LIDAR data, water level monitoring, water balance analysis, pit reviting infrastructure, install, socioeconomic and cultural data. This is one of pitland hydrical units that we that have good data, including LIDAR data, water balance, and other data. TASI also, in this uh, pitland hydrical unit, there are TASIC, we call the lake, natural lake. It's very interesting landscape. It is lake formed in the dome of Ambrogenus peatland and can be found in Rio and used to be found in Jambi as well. We are curious if this landscape might be able to show how healthy peatland can be and might be also used as criteria and indicator as well. In the future, in this landscape, we, may, we want to develop pit friendly commodity and also payment for ecosystem services approach for economic development. Pulau Tebing Tinggi is one example how landscape based restoration can be done. We must use our modality data operation in this in this peatland hydrical unit to reach our goal by an peatland landscape management and how we can protect the tropical peatland landscape and generate positive impact for communities or anything from our effort in preserving the tropical peatland landscape based on robust criteria and indicator establishment in the future. So, but if we look at the other uh, peatland agricultural unit, because uh, uh, the, the, the responsibility of peatland restoration agency about around the 106 uh, peatland agricultural unit. In fact, there are uh, many uh, or there are 100 uh, peatland agricultural units to be restored. Each of them has unique characteristics. For example, in Papua, Jambi, West Kalimantan, Central Kalimantan, etc. No silver bullet exists. Each peatland agricultural units must be treated individually and be studied uh, continuously. Each peatland agricultural unit has their own peatland characteristics. Each Pitland Hydrical Unit has their own people and culture. So, right now we talk about the way forward. What should we do? We must step forward and we must conceptualization and design the framework for criteria and indicator based on the four pillar holistically for achieving harmonic living. Networking and cooperation between institutions is very important. Indonesia and international cooperation consists of from all sector. So in the next series uh, workshop, we hope scientists, academic, practitioner, 
uh, local community, multi level government, non government bodies, the mass the mass they must participate in the refining and verifying the uh, criteria and indicator of peatland restoration. It is also important for us to cooperate with all stakeholder axis. So, as the uh, committee asked me to wrap up the, the 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 event, so we already listened about the from asked for about the talk about the peatland restoration based on water balance. So I think the important message about peat must wet in all of the landscape scale. And Pak Tampu Bolon uh, uh, discuss about the Bali the Bali the culture. So and then uh, Bu Director uh, Bu Ati about the regulation, and then uh, Dr Lela about the indicator is scientifically valid based on available data and others, and Pak Sony about the implementation economic indicator uh, about the domestic and others, and uh, the my college uh, Pak Budi uh, talk about the BRG activities inside toward uh, criteria and indicator development. And Bu Dr. Maria about the robust uh, criteria indicator must support halting and halting the degradation and rise awareness the importance of successful ecosystem restoration. So the last one, I want to conclude my uh, wrap up and my uh, discussion. One, 120 research project of BRD has at least said that there are four essential pillar, pillar in criteria and indicator peatland restoration. And at the present regulation regarding the criteria and indicator to restore mostly uh, focus on biophysic aspects. So we need to uh, extend this uh, uh, aspect. And gap include uh, peatland hydrology variability, new economic paradigm, stakeholder participation, and government. And also uh, uh, about the restoration measure, differ between uh, PHU also very uh, important and must scientifically valid based on the reliable data. We must use all available uh, modality, including all aspect data and activities for our goal by and sustainable tropical peatland landscape management and how we can generate positive impact for communities from our effort in restoring tropical peatland. Our stakeholder must participate in refining and verifying the criteria and indicator, scientists and other stakeholders. So from the uh, last one, I want to also give highlight from Pak Nazir Fuad as uh, he gave us the opening remark, in pitland, uh, pit restoration, it is crucial to restoring the biophysical condition of the pitland, but more than that, the criteria and indicator of non-biophysical criteria such as socioeconomy and governance must also be uh, progressively established toward the, the sustainable pitland management and restoration. Pit restoration must be mainstreaming from the small scale, smaller scale, starting from the village level to the entire pitland area. So, I think uh, that's all, uh, pa Daniel, and all participation, participation, uh, all participant. Thank you for uh, your attention. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pak Haris, for a very nice uh, conclusion and, and wrap up. And we've been very much uh, privileged to hear your very thoughtful notes uh, today. So, participants, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, we've been traveling very far in the past three hours or so. It's a long journey from the global to national, subnational local and even household uh, people. Uh, it's been a very rich and thoughtful um, discussion that we had. Uh, we feel that we are being guided. Um, with this cooperation, uh, participation of, of uh, you all, we are confident that we can move forward. And um, it is our pleasure to, to welcome you all in the next series of webinars. 
And I think one of the uh, prompting message that we heard today is that, yes, spit must be wet, it must be revegetated, and it must generate income. And, and also, uh, prop, uh, not poverty, but improve the uh, poverty of the local community. So the, the question is how to measure that, what kind of tool we, we need to do and implement to, to look at uh, the success or perhaps failure of a peatland restoration. So with that, I would like to conclude our uh, long day session and uh, thank you very much for your participation and positive feedback to uh, the process. Good afternoon, good evening, and have a nice day. Thank you.